What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of the Level Up podcast. We have Greg Harrelson. We have special guest Dobbin Buck here today. We're talking about one big mistake that agents are making in your marketing right now, how to fix it. We're also going to talk about the future of database marketing, how to take that to the next level. We've got a bunch of cool stuff to get into, including the intersection of uh, Infusionsoft and chatbots. So we're continuing a little bit of the conversation that you may have caught last time with Michael Reese, uh, the speculation on kind of where real estate marketing is going. So we've got a lot of cool stuff to get into today. So first, let's bring in Greg. What is up today? Hey, man, I'm excited to be here. There's a lot of people that might be seeing this know that Dobbin uh, and I have been good friends and we've collaborated for, for years on marketing automation. So I'm mm. excited to be here and just uh, ready to unload a bunch of uh, tips and, and hope the audience can can take that, leverage it and make some money. That's right. So Dobbin, you're kind of the, the other half of the brain trust behind the, the engine essentially of what runs Greg's business, which, uh, we, which we've alluded to on, on other broadcasts and people may know a little bit about that, but you really are the implementation brains uh, behind actually getting this stuff to work in real life, as well as staying on the cutting edge of kind of what's happening in that whole world. So where does that come from? Like, where does the knowledge come from and what do you do on a daily basis? Sure. Well, uh, it's great to be considered part of a, a brain trust, first of all. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the, the real success in that is um, I've been really honored and fortunate to, to work with really smart people like Greg. So it's more of a collaborative function. So on a technical side, um, I'm myself and my team are staying up to date on uh, what our clients are doing, we're going out and finding out the, the latest and, and, and greatest methods for a variety of different um, niches and, and verticals. And ultimately, when I can come back to a highly motivated and informed um, friend and customer, and we can really work through the potentials of uh, different approaches to marketing and, and their vertical. In this case, we're talking about real estate, which I am extremely fond of. Um, we really come up with the best of both worlds. And I think that that's been the key to, the, to success and particularly key to success with, with Greg is that we both bring a different piece to this puzzle. And then as we, you know, as we work together, amazing things um, have occurred and, I know a lot of people are grateful because Greg is a very sharing individual. So what we've created together, we've been able to put back out and give back to the real estate community. So I have many, many, many real estate broker and agent uh, customers that are benefiting from the research and the uh, trials that uh, Greg and I have embarked upon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I, I hear the word pain, and there's a lot of pain, a lot of experimentation, a lot of, <laughs> a lot not, of not for me, Matt. Not, not, not for, not for me. No, yeah. I just sit in my office and start creating all these crazy ideas, and then <laughs> Dobbin's the one that has to look at this and like, what the heck is this? And go figure out if this is something he can actually automate. And the That's good right. thing is, is typically uh, Dobbin finds an answer for it, so that yeah. it, it's working out really good. Awesome. Well, let's get into it a little bit. So, Greg, what's what's your perspective on the, the big mistake that agents are making? This has nothing to do necessarily with marketing automation, although that's a part of the potential solution to the problem. But what's what's the real big mistake? You know, I think one of the things that Dob and I have discovered, and he brought this up er earlier in a conversation, is that um, people use too broad of a stroke when approaching marketing, period. You know, and I could say, uh, let's just say direct mail. They just send thousands of pieces with no real target or um, email marketing. They, their databases maybe are not segmented properly. And so they just have their database might be a thousand people and it's 100 property owners and 900 buyers. And that's the, the limits to their segmentation. In other words, their segmentation is just buyer or seller. And that's mm -hmm. too broad of a stroke. Uh, so uh, Facebook, you know, social media, what are they doing? They're going and geo-targeting an entire zip code instead of refining that and targeting it to something specific. So when people use a broad stroke approach, then their communication is kind of like a, a blast shotgun approach. Hopefully somebody out of these thousands of people, hopefully this message will resonate with somebody. 
and and there's so much noise in marketing right now in 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 our industry that there's no way that that broad stroke approach is going to get any attention so in my opinion it's probably worth saving your money and doing nothing if you're going to do it on such a broad stroke if you're going to take that approach now i guess you can get lucky but that's where i think the problem is is people are using too much of a broad stroke yes yeah so when you think about it in marketing terms the the ideal is the, the ideal that we're kind of approaching in this whole you know interesting new world is one person uh, you know a market of one essentially like being able to deliver that right message to the right person that you want to speak to at the right time and so the closer you can get to that ideal the better so everybody else starts with kind of the mentality of how do i get this message out to as many people as possible you should be thinking more of the opposite which is how do i get the perfect message to the smallest number or a very small number of people so that I can, small enough that I can tailor the message to them essentially, to tell them exactly what they yeah. wanna hear that'll get them to take action. Yeah, so when, when I think of marketing automation, and I'm sure Dobbin would have a whole different um, you know, definition, but you know, in the context of this conversation, when I hear marketing automation, I don't hear you know, uh, uh, email blast. And I think people, I think generally people are thinking an email blast is marketing automation and maybe technically it is but mm -hmm. i don't think that at all i think an email blast is an email blast and marketing um, automation is where you take that same audience you segment it you can actually use automation to send massive amounts of people a message but each message is tailored to the individual person that it's going to hit and so it speaks and it feels like it's one-on-one -on -one communication versus one size fits all. And, and, and as we, you know, we've started this four or five years ago, um, you know, using Infusionsoft and, and, and working on database, you know, dominating the databases. And we used to be able to get away with, you know, if we can just blast them something cool, we're going to get a return. But you can't get a return as much on that you have to make people feel like you're only talking to them and it takes a machine in order to help you do that yeah well let's get into that part of it a little bit Dobbin so you you essentially are the the genius behind the machine as we would call it right now so the, the machine the machines that we have we're approaching the point where we can use AI and machine learning and um, chatbots and things like that. We talked a little bit about that with Michael Reese. So you're on the cutting edge of kind of incorporating that into Infusionsoft where people's databases can be and incorporating and blending those two things together. So what are what are the possibilities right now? I mean, how, how close are we to being able to deliver like a tailored message to a very small group of people that is really intended just for them and only them? Sure. So in the present right now, um, yeah. the, one yeah. of the beautiful things about where Greg has come from, specifically with his approach to databases, has set him up perfectly for what we're able to accomplish presently with technology. So going back years, um, Greg has been segmenting his database down from major market to you know counties to submarkets to master plans to neighborhoods to specific condos, specific buildings, and so. In our Infusionsoft database, there's virtually, you know, thousands of tags that are breaking down, and we're I'm talking about on the um, listing side or the seller side. So he has a seller database that's really impeccable, it's clean, and it's accurate. So we've been doing that with email marketing for quite some time. So if you want to do effective just solds notifications, ultimately he can pull up all the homeowners in a specific community send out the just sold. It's targeted specifically to them. It has meaning to them. Well, as we're getting more and have been getting more into social media and multi-channel marketing, um, and this could also include direct mail or SMS marketing and everything else that's all combined and all controlled from a singular database, we're able to provide very specific messaging that will resonate with the person on the other end. If you send me something that's talking about my neighborhood, it's gonna win over something that's talking about my county or my city. And so that's ultimately what we're trying to do. It requires planning, it requires development, it requires specialized ads, specialized you know, sponsored advertisements on, on um, 
retargeting ads on, on Facebook and things that we're doing, there's effort involved. But once we've really broken down our market, nobody else is doing it this way. I've seen all the way across the country. I'm working with people all the time and helping them develop it. The problem is, is that this isn't something that you just decide to do on Tuesday and it's up and running on Thursday. <laughs> Yeah. Greg has been working on his database for years. Mm -hmm. His team has been working on his database for, for years. So when Greg was talking about broad strokes, that's sort of the gateway with people is get in and get a system that can be segmented. And perhaps you start with some broader marketing efforts as you're building and segmenting out your homeowners and really getting that in line to where you can but one of the words that we used earlier when I, I talked to you, Greg, is, you know, when we're talking about is becoming autonomous within your own systems and not reliant on systems outside your market. And this is really the key. And just to sort of jump forward and when we're talking about Facebook chatbots, you know, currently we can integrate those with our with our um, with our database so we can identify people. We can send the messages once they have approved to accept our message in um, in Facebook. Then we can send them quick, easy to push question and answer type of scenarios. We can survey them. We can utilize um, keyword structures. We can send them blog articles. We can do anything through automa automation that we want. So we can really control our experience. So what we've thought of in the past as a marketing funnel as it applies to let's just say marketing automation and email i'm able to do that at an exponential rate that's like moving them through aspects of the funnel that might have taken me months or years before in minutes and then i'm able to segment based on those specific answers once they're in and they're answering and they're 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 bought into that experience and we're moving through it I'm able to collect information and more importantly, provide them with really valuable information that's very specific to them on the fly. Once again, it all has to do with planning, with mapping this out with a real estate professional that knows their market inside and out, knows the community and all that. But the possibilities right now are just limitless and very, very exciting. Yeah. You know, just and, and if I can just chime in here, uh, Dobbin, and and I'm looking for your guidance on this to see if I'm I'm if I'm thinking right. Um, but I just imagine I'm going to get a buyer lead today through my Real Geeks website, and we've got it integrated where my buyer lead goes through Real Geeks and then automatically goes into Infusionsoft. And what I'm hearing you say is that because um, we're just now setting this up, and I just want to make sure I describe it right for the audience. What I'm hearing you say is then we can actually retarget that particular lead, do something on Facebook, show up some little boosted post or sponsored ad on Facebook that might be about buying property in my local market. And it might have a questionnaire that well, it's a sponsored ad and they click that it could go into Messenger. And now all of a sudden they get this message in their Facebook Messenger app. And it may have a question like, for instance, I'll go real, real, real basic. Um, are you thinking about uh, uh, are you thinking about buying in the next 30 days, uh, 90 days or um, a 180 plus? And then they would click one of those. OK, they say 90 days and then they click that. Then that we can then turn around and now start sending them information based on what their click was. Right. I mean, that's the total flow. I mean, I could take an email lead or an Internet lead, Zillow, um, Boomtown, wherever it comes from. It could go in, get integrated into Infusionsoft. We could hit them on social media. They can get, send them a message. They can click a button and we're automatically tagging them right from there. Is that possible? Yeah, absolutely. That's possible here and today. And there's many more complex and and segmented approach to approaches to this but well, it's I've got great. I've got some real complex ones in my mind right now I was trying to keep it as <laughs> I was trying to keep it as I mean it was like I really had to work hard to keep it that simple but let me let me circle back around one more thing okay and I and I kind of cut you off I just don't want to leave this hanging so I said everything that I said Dobbin has confirmed it 
this is the solution to all the people who are thinking, oh my gosh, I've got a database. I wish I would have segmented it. Well, it's not too late because I just explained to you how we would segment some random internet lead. So if you've yeah. got a thousand buyers, 5,000 buyers sitting in some database, you could practically do everything I just said. And depending on how you're programming the bot and the questionnaire, that's where you're gonna automatically segment it. So there's a challenge in our market, which is people are taking too much of a broad stroke and they're doing it because they didn't segment their, their database properly on day one. The solution is what we just said. It's not too late. It's just instead of manually doing it on the front end, you're using automation to actually push them into the right boxes of segmentation. That's yeah, that's a, that's it's it's so cool. I mean, and the beauty of it is, is that we can now reach out to them from our database so we can go to them. And also we can as far as as far as fresh leads and fresh information coming into our database, we can pull them into our database through these methods, through, through these same methods. So we're coming from two different directions and um, really we're, we're just able to get a more rapid and effective segmentation to where we can provide them with a better service because ultimately at the end of the day, he who or she who provides with the most specific information that's helpful great service and um and niche down segmented messaging that fits their specific need and does it in a consistent and professional manner is going to be the winner that's the person that's going to go home with the money and i'm seeing it day in and day out with my clients and it's working incredibly that's awesome yeah and, and the way that i the way that i see it when i hear you guys talking is so you've got kind of um, got almost like a conflicting trend or or a, a different approach to kind of narrow people down through the funnel, which which is where kind of the the whole ISA trend has come from, which is you kind of you're looking for this machine, right? In other words, you want to you want a washing machine that's spinning. You want to take cold leads, you want to throw them into the washing machine, and you want to spin out all the people that aren't qualified right now. Keep them keep in touch with them some other way. But you want to whittle down and spin out. You want a machine essentially that spits out all the unqualified and, and narrow, limits them down to the people that are that are qualified. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can have and you can have a call center and you can dump everybody in there. And the call center is the machine. Mm -hmm. But what you guys are building is a literally a machine that just where the machines talk to people and by the way that they interact with them, that's what spins out the unqualified people and whittles it down to the people that are qualified. Then you funnel those people to maybe a smaller team of people, either a smaller call center or Greg, in your case, just get them right to the agent, get them to the people Absolutely. that are most qualified to help them right now. By the time they get there, they've already qualified themselves because they've gone through this process. They, they've gone through the machine that spun out all the unqualified people that are a waste of your agent's time that right now your agents are having to talk to and the agents are the machine. Yes. So remember, Dobbins called it a lead identification system. I think mm -hmm. ISAs, you know, there's a lot of confusion with ISAs. ISA, typically in the beginning, we were talking about ISAs are people that actually receive inbound leads and they mm -hmm. wash them out. OK, now people will talk about ISAs or calling their expireds. That's not an ISA, right. not as not not as as it was first introduced to in our in industry. Sense, yeah. Yeah. yeah, not from an inbound sense. So what we're doing, yes, is Infusionsoft is is like an isa in this context where mm -hmm. it's washing through all these leads the, the the great thing is is that it can actually handle hundreds of thousands of leads yeah. and wash through them and and for an isa department to be able to do something like that you would have to have a hundred isas on your team to be able to actually squeeze out and find all the good stuff and the good nuggets that are in that that database and 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 we all know whether we want to admit it or not um it, our databases are enormous not mine i'm talking about just agents in general mm -hmm. if you've got zillow i mean you're you, you know in, in realtor.com or real geeks or boomtown you've got people you've got thousands of people that are that are in yeah. these databases but we just what what we do is we for, we we only acknowledge that we have a certain portion of them because that's the only portion that our ISA or our team can handle. Hence, why market and automation is so critical because where our bandwidth is so wide when we're using.
bots and tools like this. Hmm. Interesting. So Dobbin, what's what's your take on, you, you kind of alluded to what the present is in the terms of what's possible and you're getting closer with Greg in to actually implementing that so that you can run and start spinning through whether it's your database or whether it's cold leads. What what do you see coming on, you know, what's what's the next couple of years have to hold for us? Well, strategically, I think where I'm interested in is um, Greg's really, well, masterful at, at many things, but one thing that's been really inspiring to me is um, what he refers to as his community domination plan. Mm. And so methodology of farming, and the beautiful thing of that as it applies to the technology is that focused farming, we can do focused marketing in tandem with that as we're moving from one market segment to another, and that might be with multiple agents, that might be multiple at the same time, but it gives us a approach that, that's almost bite-sized chunks that we can work on as we're working through a major market. And so as people are farming, gathering data, gathering contacts, homeowners, all of that information, we're able to then make defined messaging, defined advertising and all of that goes along with those efforts. So it's sort of they build as you're working through these things, if that makes sense. I'm really intrigued with that because I think the future, I, I think the present, it, the present is the future. It's mm -hmm. about having very specific messaging that I'll, I'll repeat myself a hundred times here, you know, very specific messaging that is close to exact of, of where a person's interest is. And this is the way that we can do it in harmony with the brick and mortar feet on the street approach to real estate, you know, and, and, and it really requires once again, a collaboration between team and technology that's mm -hmm. I, I find to be crucial. And I'll, I'll just make one other little comment that was sort of cycling through my mind. Something that I've seen is that the advanced real estate marketers, so the people that take their database segmentation, their approach to marketing seriously, for some reason, they also seem to have kick-ass teams that are effective and capable of taking these leads and nurturing them through to whether it's a buyer or to a listing. For some reason, I'm not doing incredible marketing for teams that have a substandard sales team of agents you know there's something there and i know that with greg he has like the special forces of real estate there in myrtle beach they're, <laughs> you know they're superhumans. Well, Dom, but it's you like, know uh, what does bill gates said if you add if you add automation to a process <laughs> it's a bad it's a bad process it just makes it bad automation uh which is i mean that's essentially what you've got is you've got teams that if they're not good at lead conversion already automating their crappy lead conversion it gets it it still ends up with a crappy result so that makes it makes sense yeah yeah amen <laughs> very, very 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 good point so you know going a little bit further on the community domination um what again dobbin and i have worked together so much on on this stuff but community domination just for you for I, i've thrown that out there a few times mm -hmm. on some different podcasts because i'm really into it right now and and the results are just astounding the results that we're getting and Mike the concept was to gain market share one neighborhood at a time okay so there's there's where we're talking about really focusing on instead of saying I want to gain market share in Charleston or Myrtle Beach or this this big city this big town it's like how about we go and gain market share one neighborhood at a time what if we could gain 20 percent market share in a community and then we could actually duplicate and repeat that process. And that's what we're really focusing on. And yes, it's a combination of old school farming, which would be a direct mail piece. It would be uh, building a, a community website for, which is very inexpensive, but building a community website, having a, um, a, a, a marketing piece uh, offline going direct to their direct ma to their mailboxes. It would be social media, it would be Facebook um, targeting, um, but only targeting that neighborhood and not geo-targeting, taking the database out of Infusionsoft that's been segmented 
for that community and uploading that into Facebook as a custom audience. So 100% of the people who actually see the Facebook sponsored post are going to be documented property owners. And then a quarterly, uh, a quarterly phone call. So call that community once a quarter, mail it once a month, run Infusionsoft uh, newsletters through e you know email marketing once a month, Facebook once a month, all to that that computer that that one same community. Instead of focusing on 30 communities that you're sending just sold cards, take one community and dominate it. And then when you're getting traction, duplicate it. And if you want to really dominate and gain market share in your market, you have to slow down, just em employ these types of strategies and then clone it to the next neighborhood and the next neighborhood. Right. So that, that's kind of what, you know, Dobbin and I are working on, on now. We've, we're, we've gotten a lot of, uh, pretty far and we're probably running the community domination plan right now on approximately 10 communities. And there's not one that I would say is not considered a success. Interesting. All right, so Dobbin, from your perspective, what is what is it about Greg in terms of the way he set this up? You mentioned that he's masterful at this stuff. What, what to you is kind of the, the ingredient or maybe the superpower that Greg's developed over the years that makes him kind of the ideal fit that's making these community domination plans a success? Sure, that's actually an easy question to answer. Um, apparently because apparently it was a hard one to ask. I don't know what my problem was. <laughs> <laughs> so I mentioned earlier, you know, that, that I am really honored to, to work with um, great customers that wind up becoming my, my friends. And um, the people that I like to surround myself with are not necessarily just people that have good ideas and talk about good ideas but that go out and do their good ideas mm -hmm. so greg would probably agree with me that all of his ideas have not been solid gold over the years what? but um, <laughs> that's definitely the truth i've failed way more than i've succeeded you know and and hey like any successful individual we we, we would all say that but the thing about it is is that um Together, we have tried so many different things. It's a good idea. You know what? Test it. Try it. See if it works. If it works, as Greg just said, repeat it, you know, and that's the key. And that's the key to success is, is being a doer. And that's what I've seen. There's, a you know, many, many, many years of experience and even generational experience that, that Greg has um, in regards to real estate, of course, comes in to where I believe that he's making solid and you know founded decisions from the beginning but we're doing stuff we're trying stuff and trying things ahead of other people you know and i think that's the key to be successful in the market is to to take some risks uh educated you know educated risks and 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 roll with it and this stuff isn't always like the most expensive stuff to go after it's about getting in developing a strategy having a plan and executing that plan, and then in many cases, holding the team or a segment of members of a team to practice, execute that plan, and prove it as a, a worthwhile, repeatable strategy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, okay, that's let, let me add to that. Let me yeah. add to that, Matt. Is, is the most expensive thing about all this is not getting into action, which is execution. And we're not talking about expensive as in, what Infusionsoft would cost. We're just talking about whatever you're doing right now. There's so many people that are going to look at this and they're going to come up with some great ideas, but that's just motion. Creating great ideas is just, it's being in motion. But the key is, is getting into action. It's like, are you willing to take those five or six ideas and choose one and execute it on, start executing it right now? And I think that's where, you know, most people are challenged is it, it, it's fun or it seems like you're, you're making progress when you're in the planning and thinking stage and the creating stage. But mm. creating and thinking and planning, it's necessary, but it's not progress. It's preparation. You've got to actually get into action. Action is where the progress comes from. And I see too few people are, are really strong at execution. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Well, you mentioned briefly, uh, Greg, again, in the last few minutes we have left, I, I want to kind of position this in terms of, you know, helping people get into action. So there is a way that they could take, let's let's say they have this massive database that's, that's been unsegmented this whole time and they they're, the technology now exists to reasonably quickly um, segment that out using Facebook and things like that. But let's say you're an agent and, and we had a comment here from a guy earlier uh, in the show, just single agent, one buyer agent who prospects, and he, they're prospecting every day, closing 65 to 80 deals a year. You know, just asking what systems, yeah, it's great. It's a great solid business, a rainmaker business. But how does that person start to prepare for these trends uh, when they don't have necessarily that massive team structure and a lot of their income, a lot of the profit in the business is going just to their own personal expenses. Uh, so then maybe they do, they need to set themselves up for some of these things that are coming and start segmenting their database now in preparation for what's coming. What would you recommend to someone in that position? Well, so one of the challenges with a single agent is when do you choose to to expand, not expand into different markets, but when do you <laughs> choose to like leverage um, staff when do you, you know, the, the first ISA is going to be the hardest ISA to ever hire. The first staff member is the hardest staff member because you're not sure if you're ready. And then, you know, you know but here's what you have to think. You have to think like this. You have to go ahead and position yourself. Use the, go ahead and start using the technology and let your business grow into it versus growing and always being behind and and one and needing the technology to catch up to you what you want to do is you want to go ahead and take a leap and get involved in some sort of technology and grow into that technology and right before you you've you've grown into it then go get the next technology and grow into it again too many people they stay especially as a solo agent maybe with one buyer's agent and 65 does so that's a good business this person's got whoever that is they're doing a good business. The key is, is they're probably in that zone where it's like, oh gosh, do I take this risk or do I just keep doing this? But if you don't take the risk, you're not going to be able to grow. That's my opinion. Now, the key is, is the first thing that I would grow in, I would grow towards technology and automation before I would grow, th grow towards staffing. Yes. OK, now you go in and you get your technology, you get your system set up and you start growing into that. It'll be obvious that you need to add staff because you're going to see a, um, a, a burst of, uh, of new business, new leads, or identifying way more leads than you've ever identified in the past. So that's kind of my thought to it. Hopefully I answered that question. Yeah, that's really good. That is what people struggle with because they want to, they're always catching up. And the, I think the traditional answer for a long time is scale up with people. And you're very good at, you know, scale up with skills first then scale up with technology and automation, and last, scale up with people. And I think the reason for that is you have a good perspective on this, is that leadership is probably the biggest challenge. And so you get into you get into expanding with people, and all of a sudden you confront all the leadership challenges about yourself. And there's a lot of personal self-development that goes into making that work when you start expanding through people. Much easier to start by expanding with systems and technology where it just does what it needs you to do. It's consistent, yeah. it's reliable, then you get those systems down, then you start expanding with people and developing as a leader and things like that. Yeah, absolutely, because you take a 65 deal producer, they expand too quickly with, with, with people, and mm -hmm. then the management and the leadership and all that stuff that has to be developed, all of a sudden the 65 deals goes to 55 deals, the exact opposite of what you planned, right? Is you end up having to take a few steps backward. And, but that's okay. It's just that, but mentally and emotionally, it drives you nuts. And then usually you terminate the, the staff member and say, I'm not doing that anymore. So if you, if, if, you, if you expand your skills and develop your skills and you develop out your technology, then it's going to be, uh, you're, you're probably not going to see yourself take a step backward nearly as much as you do when you actually lead with staff. Right. Yeah, I mean, it makes a big difference when you're starting to expand if you're taking listing appointments at 50% versus if you take them at 85% when you start to expand. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Dobbin, quick question for you before we uh, put a bow on this one. Uh, Gregory Schwab asks, are you using uh, text and video extensively uh, in your marketing campaigns through Infusionsoft since the open rate on text is way higher than email? So what's your opinion on that? Would you, would you repeat that again? I, yeah. I didn't quite understand. So he says, are you using text and video extensively in your automated campaigns through Infusionsoft? That's the question. Uh, he just elaborates since because we know the open rate on text is higher than uh, open rates on email. 
Sure, absolutely. We're and you're referring to SMS. Um, we're utilizing SMS and certainly utilizing um, utilizing video all over the place. So, um, but that being said, um, we're also still doing um, a lot of email, a lot of email segmentation, and a ton of retargeting now. Very specialized retargeting based on where they are, where they're segmented, where they are in the funnel. Um, so that would all be really common. Great question. So, so yeah. So as usual, Greg, you've said this before. It's multi-channel. It's it's all the hundred percent. It's a hundred percent. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. And then on your emails and stuff, I just out of curiosity for myself, if I remember this correctly, a lot of the emails that are going out are fairly plain text, right? They're not overly designed. They're not super complicated. It's it's the message. It's the content that's really important more so than the design of the email, right? Yes, yes. I, I, uh, no question about it. Go ahead, Dobbin, please. Yeah, yeah, we use we use them plain Jane. Uh, we get we get higher conversion from that. There are um, exceptions to that rule to where if we're doing uh, monthly newsletters or 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 biweekly mm -hmm. newsletters or whatever the frequency is to where we want to brand it up more. Um, but in general, with our emails within the funnel, we're going to keep them as clean as possible. And that's just proven to be uh, the most successful route. And do you guys, just a quick curiosity question, do you guys worry too much about who gets like the branded pieces while they're in a funnel, getting those plain text pieces because they're part of a specific campaign or a funnel that you're trying to work? Do you worry about whether people get both? No, the messaging is different because yeah. the expectation would be from let's just say newsletter format is that, hey, here's, you know, it's like a newspaper or, you know, this is information that's scheduled. Whereas with from from inside the funnel, the emails are going to be more personalized. It's going to be more like me sending you a message type yeah. of thing as opposed to, you know, hey, here's our great brand, our great culture, so forth and so on that we would want to represent in for our seller database or our buyer database and newsletter. Yeah, and I just had that. I asked because I just had that situation come up where somebody asked me like, hey, you know, like the branded emails that were going out, they wanted to start sending out some, they wanted to send people down a specific funnel. They were very concerned, like they wanted to suppress their branded emails, like their newsletter, um, whenever somebody was in the middle of a campaign, which didn't make any sense to me because yeah, they, they are, they should be different. Uh, they should be branded differently, but uh, I think that would help put a lot of people's minds at ease that the, the guys that are the best in the business are not worrying about that. Branded versus all text unbranded emails, everybody can get everything. Yeah, yeah they, they can. Well, there's a it's court it's a coordinated effort. When we built mm -hmm. the camp, when we built the campaign, you got to understand when we're building content, we're not just typing emails in a computer. We're 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 getting in front of a whiteboard and we're putting sticky notes and mm -hmm. we're building it across the whole damn room. Right. Yeah. And we got sticky notes. OK, we're going to send this email. And then if they click this, then they get this email. But if they click that, then they get this email. And then this newsletter is going to hit them once a month or every other or, or biweekly. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure that we've mapped out the conversation. So there's no conflicting conversation. There's no right. duplication in the conversation. So that's, you know, that's all in our campaigns, that's all mapped out. So we make sure that it's seamless so we don't have to worry about all that. And in addition, then we're also looking at that information and then we're saying, okay, well, what is our social media, our Facebook campaigns going to look like? Well, if this email is going to go out on, on March 22nd, then we're going to time it where four days later, this Facebook uh, um, ad or post is going to appear. So we'll, so it's all timed out where they're actually building on each other, but it's very unlikely that the consumer would actually catch it. Right. Because if I say, so you know, like instead of saying an email, what's your home worth? Um, mm -hmm. And then the Facebook ad saying, what's your home worth? It probably wouldn't do that. We probably wouldn't have an email go out here, find out what your property's worth on Monday and then Wednesday, find out what your property's worth. We wouldn't do it like that. What we do is hypothetically find out what your property's worth on Monday. And then Wednesday, there might be a video show up on Facebook that says something like, you know, in order to maximize the value out of your home in Myrtle Beach, watch this video or five ways to maximize your sales price when selling a home. You see, mm -hmm. it's speaking to the same person, two totally different conversations. But if they saw the email about what's their home worth and then they watch that video, the fact that they did both of those things tells me that person's that person is investing time in that conversation. Mm -hmm. It's probably somebody that one of my agents need to call. Yeah.
Yeah, and that's what's interesting is that that's where the ego can potentially get in the way because you have people that want to, their entire goal for the marketing is just to reach as many people as possible. Your goal is to start with as many people as possible and narrow it down to a small number of people because somebody actually has to pick up the phone and call them. Yes. Yeah, which is fine. It's, it's, the, it's the opposite of the way the average agent or the average marketer or the average person, business person thinks. Right. And yeah. typically we know if we go against the crowd, you <laughs> tend to actually, if, if you do what the crowd's doing, you get what the crowd's getting. Yeah. If you do the opposite, you tend to get the opposite. It's yeah. the bottom line. A great quote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dobbin. So how do people uh, reach you, connect with you, and, and learn more about what you do? Sure. So uh, uh, I'm a co-owner with uh, Get You Wired Web Services. So our web address is www.getyouwired, that's G-E-T, the letter U-W-I-R-E-D.com. And as well, um, for real estate professionals that are interested in Infusionsoft and uh, the content that Greg and I have created together, which is really in my estimation with the real estate professionals that I personally work with, it was really the gateway to get in and to, and to start doing more advanced uh, marketing principles for real estate. We go to uh, www.realestatesalessolutions.com and um, there's actually a opt-in form to where people can opt in and connect with a member of my team, talk about Infusionsoft, see a demo, however we can be of service, see if it's um, of interest or a good fit. So. Uh, one way is direct. It's pretty easy to get a hold of me and as well, um, something that's just more real estate specific, realestatesalessolutions.com is the perfect gateway to get in and start that conversation. So thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely. And then for us, I know, Greg, you're very, very easy, very accessible. Um, yeah. For those of you, for those of you that are kind of listening and paying attention to the podcast specifically, uh, me and Greg, you and I did like a, a whole 30 minute video on like an intro. And in other words, getting started with marketing automation, which goes a little bit deeper into the principles and some of the myths that people have about a marketing automation. The easiest way to get that is to subscribe to the podcast. So go to the level up podcast dot com slash free. That's a direct link where you can just pop in your best email and it gives you instant access to download and watch that whole video training that we did uh, on marketing automation. But Greg, what's the best way just to connect with you personally? You know, personally, I, I, I like I always say, I keep it pretty easy. Just Greg Harrelson at gmail.com. And, you know, I'm pretty good about responding to, you know, to the, uh, the questions and whatnot that comes through my email. So be happy to do that. It's my contribution uh, to the, uh, to the real estate community. That's right. All right, guys. Well, Dobbin, thank you so much for uh, for dropping some serious uh, knowledge and, and just for your time in general. And uh, you guys are doing some incredibly awesome things. We can't wait for you to come back on and kind of share the latest, especially with the, com uh, the community domination plan. That is insane. I know people are going to want to kind of keep tabs on what's working for you so that they can start to incorporate some of those things into their business. So with that said, guys, go ahead and uh, go to the leveluppodcast.com slash free. Subscribe to the show there. You can also subscribe directly on iTunes or Stitcher if you just want it uh, dropped right to your mobile device automatically every time we put out a new show. Uh, thank you so much to everybody that's watching and listening, especially live guys here on Facebook. We appreciate your time that you devoted into learning and improving your real estate business. Guys, thank you again, and we'll see you on the next one.